Hello, this is Hawk Devine, and today we are going to be reading Backrooms to Level 587, also known as Where We Used to Have Fun. Because we all know that Backrooms, like most of them's faces, are all about nostalgia. And I feel like this might actually capture that thing that we, we love about the Backrooms so much, which is nostalgic feelings. Now let's get right into this. Level 587, where we used to have fun. It's still easy to remember the old trail. How, how much further up? Long, not long now. Come on, we've hardly walked far. Hardly walked far? It's been over an hour. I've never been into the... It's part of the barrier forest before. Area forest. Well, I got lost, but we're definitely nearly there. Or now, look, I recognize that path over there. So you mean you finally put us back on the trail you started on? Yeah, who knew taking a beeline was a bad option? <laughs> I could think of one person. Not really. I never have guessed. Honestly, the worst part was that it still took an extra half an hour to reach it. I was also in incredibly bad directions. Regardless though, we made it to what I want to show, and I'll never forget her reaction. The marble of the craftsmanship, the color, the way it stood out in the dense foliage of the clearing like a gleaming gem in, and in the crown of a queen it was a beauty and I'll definitely never forget the utter fibs I told about it. The treehouse itself found a picture of my old that's old stuff. Here it is. Pretty cool, right? What well, that thing looks huge. Can we go in? Absolutely. I mean I did build it after all. No way. That can't be true. How'd you do it? Oh that's a secret. I can't be revealing my secret ultra craftsmanship hours now, can I? Then you gotta tell. It's really incredible that you did all this yourself. You must really take after your dad. This looks just like the stuff he builds. You know, for the traders. Uh, okay. I guess maybe he helped a little bit. Hmm. Perhaps more than a little bit. Hmm. Ah, oh, you got it. He built it. Yeah, I knew it. You don't really have to lie about it, you know. Well, yeah, but I want to impress you. <laughs> I'm still impressed. Is it for us? You bet it is, and that part's not a lie. My dad surprised me with the yesterday, and I, uh, I wanted to share it with you. I was thinking it could be our place, if, if you'd like, for just the two of us. Hmm. Uh, so what do you say? I say, let's get up there. Wait, how do we get up there? Felt like history was made that day. A single dramatic event that forever swayed like the okay, horse of history. From that day on the treehouse became our place is to go. Our place to hide and our place to play and have fun. After school, after dinner, in our free time during holidays, and frankly, whenever we fancied, it was ours. All ours. Magical is the biggest understatement to describe that place. We'd act like completely naive kids in that long... And that thing, heck, I still remember playing childish games, even when we were just becoming teenagers. We did tag, a few bats of truth right there, and even headed out around the forest to pick up various treasures, which usually were pine cones, odd rocks, and big sticks. She was the sole person coming up with the games and activities, oh, I got the voice wrong then, to play. It wasn't to say I didn't get involved, but I could tell she loved the outdoorsy activities she says on. I never understood at the time why I didn't like them as much. I remember 
I like your ideas much more than my own. Above anything, though, I'll never forget the first time we dared to stay overnight. We sat on the balcony, looking up at the stars. I miss stargazing with you. Gosh, it's cold. Yeah, I'm sure you'll be fine. But do you need a blanket just in case? Oh, I'll be okay. Thank you, though. What? What are you doing? Um, you know, just putting my head on your shoulder. Uh, why? Well, you're warm. Um, lots of stars out tonight. <laughs> yeah. What do you think stars even are? They're just stars, aren't they? I mean, they're cool, but... They're so... But there's so much more. Remember what our teacher said in class the other day? I bet they're other worlds. Other worlds? What are you on about? Well, apparently there's many of them in the ocean. Beyond the ocean. One is a recreation of your bedroom. <laughs> You've definitely been in listening to too many sea legends. Graduates are just level... Yep, yeah, that's level 29. Level 114. We don't need to read those. I'm telling you, it's real. One day, I think we should go find them. There's so much more out there to explore beyond this island. I just know it. Both of us exploring beyond the sea? Doesn't that sound a little dangerous? So does staying in a tree house overnight, and you took that idea without a second thought. I suppose you're right. You think I'd be cut out for that stuff, then? You're more than just cut out for it. I think you'd be a spectacular explorer. I can see you going to far away a place as high fear as never even imagined before. Oh, that's just making me sound all special. You'd be there too, right? Definitely. Of course, as with most kids' fantasies, that little dream between the two of us stayed, it has nothing more than a tired, half-awake idea. It was brought up time after time, of course, but as we progressed through the later half of our teen years, it became ever more of a fantasy. Disappearing away like the fables of old, it's almost very sweet, looking back at it, seeing how that innocent dream from us both is so different to where we are today. At least in the past, we stayed together, and stayed strong. We still met at the treehouse, usually at the end of every school day, chatting gleefully, and even studying from there, even studying there from time to time. Of course, the, dream, the treehouse became less fashionable as time went on. I suppose it was childish for anyone over 16 to chat in, in tree houses, but we still all did. Besides, who hung out with who and where became trivial in the wake of the news that struck the, that struck the town next. Outsiders en masse flocked out, out not only to Hyperia, but the, the, to the entire island itself. The Meg appeared practically from nowhere, but showed up with around 20 or so folks from what we er, later learned was level 7. They were incredibly curious people, and for the longest time were stuck with us, the unknown exit out of our world being through the impossible legends of the sea. With them, however, came new legends, legends of other worlds, stories of heroes and gods, stories that captivated the whole nation greatly, stories that captivated us and kept the spirit of the treehouse alive. With all the fun we got caught up in, I'm surprised I ever got a picture of this. Oh, there's one I just remembered. Give us some lava with giant mouths in the floor. It sounds horrifying, but I sort of like it. <laughs> of course, it's you do. You're strong, lass. But I, I think you could. 
But you think you could handle the place? I certainly wouldn't go on my first trips. Well, I'm not sure where I'd go. All these all places sound so cool, but dangerous too. I I guess it's a good thing we were born here, huh? It's lucky, yeah, but come on, don't these other worlds just sound fascinating? You were in love with that back in middle school. We looked we'd look up at the stars and dream of what was out there. I'd like to hold up that little agreement we made. Wow, that's a flashback. Things were simpler back then. Back then, other worlds were ancient myths. Tales from our grandparents. But now... Now it's real. We've seen the pictures. You... You do so want to hold up that agreement, right? I know it was silly kid stuff we made up on the spot, but now it's actually possible. We just have to wait for these people to find a reliable way out of Hyperia. It is possible, and I do hope they, they find an exit from their, their stories. It sounds like Hyperia is nothing like the world or levels, I guess, that they live in. But I don't know. I... I don't really want to go. Oh! Hey, it's okay. I'm ready to listen. Whatever the matter is, whatever reason it is that you don't want to travel worlds with me. Is it something I did? Tell me. Please. Whew. <sighs> Look, I... These worlds, the stories I've heard about them, they're nothing like what I thought they'd be. When we were kids, we dreamed about great cities, magical forests, and high seas. But out there, there's so many frightening indoor places, and... And these creatures that you can't even kill. I... 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 They frightened me. I don't want to get hurt, and I don't want you to get hurt. I'd be fine. You don't know that I'd get hurt. Yes, yes I do. Please, it's horrifying out there. Now I want you to just up and leave with these people and throw your life away. I'm so sorry. I shouldn't be crying. I'm being selfish. No, it's... I understand. I'll stay. I know I screwed up with what I said. Even if I still sometimes worry about what I said now, I'm limiting your aspirations off of my stupid insecurities. This wasn't the way to act. After that day, things weren't the same. I'm sure you remember well. We met less and we spoke less in school. It wasn't falling out per se, but it was a hurdle our friendship never cleared. Suddenly, the mystique and intrigue of going to new worlds was fogged over by my outbursts. And your willingness to, to limit your life for me. You don't know, have to graduate high school when we got jobs, when you met Grace and when I met Jackson, when all of that further limited how little we act already saw each other. But I set a weight on you. You already spoke of your aspirations and you didn't even join the Meg when they caught rumors of a proper exit. By then, we were barely speaking and you still went out of your way to make sure I wouldn't be upset. You were such an idiot, and so was I. I can't imagine how unfulfilled your life could have been had you not called me right as it was announced. You'd be shocked seeing just how much my father's old house has changed. Well, I'm happy you could make it. It's certainly been a while, hasn't it? Look, you can cover whatever you'd like for not having drunk before you did. It's been a busy year. It's very she gone too now, actually. I I deserve that correction. I didn't mean to downplay how long I've been gone. 
but I just lost us track of the last time and we ever even get beat up. Why did you want to beat up? It doesn't look to me to talk casually. You're right, it's not. To tell you the truth, I'm... You're not dying, are you? No, no, Lord, no. I'm okay, really. I just have something to tell you, and I didn't want to tell you in a letter. You need to know in person. I'm all ears. Whatever it is, you can tell me. I'm... Two days ago, those Meg people finally found an exit out of Hyperia. Took them three years, but they did it. Oh, level 25. Huh. I'm assuming you heard all about... You heard about all that? Yeah, it broke the news. It was on the front page of the papers. You're not going to... Yes, I am. I'm going with them. As are a lot of other Hyperians. Grace agreed to come with me. Working in Emigant's clothing shop isn't exactly as profitable as, well, joining a multi-level organization. I, but you, I swear, if you even remotely you bring up the fact I could get hurt, I don't want to hear it. I could take care of myself. That, that's not, no, really, just don't. I'm not 17 anymore. I could take care of myself. Besides, I'm not even becoming an explorer. Chris and I are just moving into one of their communities. Look, that's great, but that's not what I'm talking about. I'm well aware you can survive out there on your own. You're right, we're not 17 anymore. We're adults now. We live our own lives and we take care of ourselves. It's just that I... I don't want to lose you. I doubt saying a contact would be easy. No, it wouldn't. Which is why I think you should come with us. Really? We've hardly been speaking. I figured this would be where we part ways forever. It doesn't have to be. And I wouldn't want that. Look, come to the same place we are, and bring Jackson too. It's a beautiful beachside town. I know the Veraka farmers would love you. Level 48. You'd really do that for me? Of course, we've had bumps in our friendship. I wouldn't throw you aside like that. I'm touched. I thought I'd lost that right. It's okay. We were 17. We said stupid things. I'm more than happy to forget if. I know, but that doesn't matter anymore. What matters to me is us. Our dreams, when we were just kids, our dreams were crazy and stupid. But even in those dreams, we'd always go together. I... I wish I could go with you. But I'm... I can't. I'm not nervous. I know we're not 17 anymore. I know I can fend for myself just as well as you, but my dad's not in good health. Still, it's only getting worse. Oh, I... I didn't know. I'm sorry about your dad. No need to be sorry, there's not much, much we can do now, but I have to stay there. I want to be there when he goes. He needs me. Gosh, that's... of course. 
That man sure has done a lot for us, huh? For sure. He bit off the treehouse. He did. Is that thing still standing? Uh, yeah. Last I checked, it's a little worse for wear nowadays, mind you, but it's there. Wow, he really had an impeccable craftsmanship. Absolutely. It's... Yeah, those are simpler times, huh? This... This is the last time we're going to meet up, isn't it? Oh gosh, please don't... Don't cry. I'm... I'm sure we can still talk. You, you said it yourself, it's hard to talk between levels. But I don't want to lose touch. We've been friends through, through thick and thin. I can't just ditch you here. And you won't. Don't let my ins own insecurities limit what you want a second time. Please, go with Grace. Go live on that beach. On that seaside, free of monsters. And when my dad's found his rest, I'll come find you again and we can catch up. <laughs> I'd like that. Promise you one thing? Yeah? Let's never lose contact again. I so wish it could have been that easy. For a guy who was formerly ill, my champion of that still lived for an extra year before finally passing on. It was hard for me. Frankly, it was hard for the whole village. He fought tooth and nail to the bitter end, but it wasn't ever pleasant. I didn't even write to you, which I feel so, so guilty for. It was hard to compose a letter when I couldn't even compose myself half the time. Which I hope you can understand, but I get if you don't. After he was cremated and his house was sold, I was lost for a long time. Being without any kind of parental figures feels odd and alien. Even worse than when he was dying, it took me a while to put myself back together. But when I did, I knew exactly what I wanted to do. I took the trip to level 48, asked the residents of Aroka where you were, and it yielded nothing. I admit, given what happened with my dad, I thought you were dead too. I'm not blaming you for not being there. I can imagine you moved given the newer, better job you end up getting. For you not being there disheartened me. I felt like I'd lost you forever. For the sake of nostalgia, I visited the treehouse again. I don't think it helped my sorry state in the slightest. It was nice to reminisce. And then I heard the news. You probably didn't even notice, but your name actually showed up in the papers back home. It was apparently on some Meg special thanks slip for helping out with the discovery of an entity. Hyperia caught wind of the slip and to celebrate your hard work. It was a little silly maybe, but it showed that you were still out there. Still alive and living your life to the fullest. It was a spark I needed to, to come find you and... I actually joined the Meg purely in hopes of finding you. Not knowing any better, I just joined their Compass Point Exploration Division and hoped I'd uh, randomly, I just randomly bump into you. Of course, I only learned later that you were in the Tech Division, and it took me even longer to realize which part of, it, of that division you were in. It did feel like I wasted seven months trying to find you in the wrong division, but my head's been too stuck on finding you to even care. I'm still not sure the level you're in exactly what you do. I really doubt the higher ups would just give that stuff out on a whim. But it doesn't even matter. I've got a plan and I've already enacted it. I don't strictly know what your job is, but I know it's to do with maintaining the level database. I'm also not much of a tech head, as it took me so long to figure out how to do this by making this page to try to reach out to you. I know I'll get a good leader within the day, 
Our treehouse certainly isn't in a level, and I'll no doubt get the right man for this. It's worth it, though, because of if anyone would see us before it vanishes, it'll be you. Thanks, Lowborn, but it's still the same place in spirit. If if you do see this, if I've even made the right. I call trying to find you. I hope. My spouting of apologies is enough to sway you into coming in to see me again. One of my assignments has me you're going back to level 29, right near our hometown. If you ever see this, and forgive me for never writing to you after you left, and for being such an idiot with how I tried to find you, there's just one thing I'd like to do. I'd like to catch up. Well... I thought it was just going to be a nostalgic level, but it turned into a very, very sad and long story. I was wrong, clearly. Anyway, that was level 578. Wait. No, 587. If you liked this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you tomorrow doing who knows what. Until then, goodbye!